What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another special edition of the Bombastic Podcast. I am joined once again. We one-upped our last guest. We had Gabe Gackle on the other day. We got Will McIntyre. We got the vet, the 12th-year senior, the big righty. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Will McIntyre, how we doing, buddy? How I'm we great, doing? great, man. How are you? You excited to get this season going, huh? I'm sure you're just so excited. counting down the minutes. I'm We're not too many minutes away. I'm tired of playing ourselves, man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to have to throw to uh, to Diggs and Stovall anymore. <laughs> yeah. You seem to be one of those dudes that pitches better against other teams than you do against your own team. If I'm just being honest, I've, I've been watching you pitch for a while, and I remember last year, or I guess 2022, I guess you weren't, you know, you didn't start the year throwing a ton. And even last year, I remember being like, man, I don't know if Will's going to be ready for the season, man. I don't know. It's not going well. But then the season comes around, and it just seems like you lock in when you have to lock in. You're just one of those dudes. What is it? Is it? Would it be a bad sign if you started dominating these scrimmages one day? Probably not. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I just uh, figured since you know you sometimes you struggle in the scrimmage, you're better in the games than you are in the scrimmages. So maybe that's just how it has to be. I just think it's like something adrenaline wise, you know, like I, not like necessarily have a different type of focus. It's just like you get a little more amped up to you know throw to a guy you've never seen compared to me facing digs for the 20th time and he knows exactly how i'm gonna pitch him like you know i'm still competing but it's like that competition goes even further when you're trying to beat somebody that's not your own teammate so yeah well i mean just going off of that just how different does it feel kind of going into this season where i mean i guess last year you were an established dude too but i feel over the course of your career every year's probably been vastly different just comparing for you individually going into this season is this like the most confident you've ever felt best oh, you've ever felt about like your sure, role you know. I've lost like 15 pounds. I feel like I'm in the best shape since I've been up here. And it's just like the staff. It's just so many dudes that like, I'm just not sure how everybody's going to get enough time, but like playing time that they're okay with. But we've had talks as like a staff where it's like, you got to be willing to not take as many innings if, if you want to get to where we're planning on going. Do you kind of think about your role a lot of like, oh, I, I hope I'm doing this, or is it this, at this point in your career, is it, I mean, I feel like you've, uh, you've, you've served in every possible role that a pitcher could use. I'm surprised they haven't used you as a left on left specialist at this point. <laughs> Might just have to get you to get a lefty out. Who knows? But I was actually originally lefty and ah. until I was like two, apparently what, two or three when that's what my dad said. Your dad strikes me as the type of dad who would like try to force you to be lefty, try to get that advantage. Oh, he told me I need to do that with my <laughs> kid. Tape, tape the right arm behind the back or something. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I'm, there's, I'm sure there's a scientist that knows. Is it? Does it work like that? If I just like force my kid to be left-handed, can he do it? I, I struggled with science in school, so that's so, yeah. like my least favorite <laughs> subject. Yeah, maybe maybe Madison just didn't didn't have the dedication, <laughs> didn't make you left-handed enough. But, he should have uh, got me a left-handed glove. I think that's his fault more than anything. Yeah, you know, maybe that's you got to take drastic measures. But then then if you're not good, it maybe you know yeah. maybe you, you find out later. Maybe. Start trying to throw left-handed. Maybe <laughs> secretly. Maybe you'll, maybe you throw be, 96 uh, from the left side. I can be uh, what's his name from uh, Mississippi State. Drew yeah, Moore. yeah. He's ambidextrous pitcher. I forgot about that dude. Wouldn't that be something if you just threw 94 from the left side? You're like 94 to 97 consistently. You're just like, oh. See, I don't know how like you do that because I be I'm hanging on one side after a ton of pitches. <laughs> I could barely get both arms up or something. I don't know. Well, dude, dude the Durangolo kid, his stuff is like completely different right left too yeah like it's a he's a completely like, different pitcher it's like four miles an hour harder on the yeah. right side but the other side it's still left-handed 90s so it's not it's not bad mm. stuff is he still so, at mississippi state yeah i think they're gonna be better this yeah, year yeah uh, i saw on twitter i was like i saw somebody retweet uh i think he's like their sunday starter for this huh? their opening series so he's still there yeah there you go it's impressive to watch we watched it last year oh yeah he has to like declare like Hey, for this yeah, because right if it's a switch hitter, I guess it's the pitcher's the, choice, right? The pitcher, I think, has to go first. Gotcha. I remember being in the press box in Starkville last year, and they were all arguing about it, and I don't even remember what the determination was. There's people arguing about who gets to determine whatever, but uh, here on the Bombastic Podcast, we cover the hard-hitting topics, so I want to ask you, walk-up music. You're back to Return of the Mac. Now, you've, you've used a few different ones throughout your career, right? I remember No Diggity. No Diggity was a good one. I thought it was, but I don't know. I had a couple people say they didn't like They didn't it. like no diggity? Yeah, but yeah, then, crazy. I was, then like, you know, Diggs gets up here and ah. he used that. I'm like, that. I like the walkout yeah. songs that like kind of plays off your name. I think those are always the coolest <laughs> and funniest. And luckily you have a, a name that is like <laughs> tailor-made for this exact situation and a song 
made for this exact situation. Uh, any walk up songs on this year's team? I, did you see the full list that they posted there? I don't know mm-hmm. if you. Any uh, who who's whose song did you who do, who did you like any of your teammates work? You know, Hagen's classic. Classic. He's, he, yeah. he's he's used that before. That's classic. But I think I'm excited. I hadn't heard it. I've heard it like you know on my phone or in the locker room. But like you know on those speakers, it's yeah. a different level. I'm excited for um, Jake Faraday's. What's his walk up song? I think I forgot about um, him. What's the name? It's a Kid Rock song. Bob, would it be? Oh, yeah, yeah. Somebody used that last year, I feel like. He used it last year. Was it him year. last just, year? He, I couldn't he remember. He just pitched uh, like one inning and yeah. he was injured or something. <laughs> we, heard, we heard it that one time, and that was it, I guess. Yeah, but he's been playing. He's been doing really well this spring, so yeah. hopefully we hear it a lot. But they, they, uh, I just, the speakers get so loud. I want to yeah. hear that song. On there. Well, certain songs, just like the bass hits yeah. different a little bit. Would yours be different if you were a hitter? Because it's a little bit different thing there, you know, because a pitcher, it's playing for a minute it's, or whatever. It's harder as a pitcher thinking of yeah. one because a hitter, they get 10 seconds, 20 seconds, if that. Whereas a pitcher, you got like a whole two minutes. You, so you just got to yeah. pick a song generally. And I, I, like just, this little, I like this little thing that the sophomores are doing this year. We got two sophomores, uh, I think Parker Cole and uh, – Christian Fouch doing some Mac- Mike, uh, Michael, Michael Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. yeah, I like that. I, I like, like that. that. When I was in high school, we uh, we had this dude used Yuck by Lil Wayne as his walk up. Lil Wayne and Two Chains. I don't know if you're familiar with the song. If anyone wants to Google the lyrics, they can. There is a very vulgar part of the song that plays, but that there was like a pitching change or something. Because it's a hitter, so it's only supposed to be 10, 15 seconds. But there was like a pitching change. So they played it the whole time. And there's a and it's a part that like it it wouldn't have gotten bleeped out because it's not a curse word, but it is such a vulgar term. I don't even want to say it on this program <laughs> where we say bad things. But it was like also a church themed night at that at the park that day, and I, I just I knew it was coming, so I sat there and just peeked and saw all the old women clutch their pearls when they heard. Mm. That's this hilarious. vulgar stuff, but uh, yeah, man, that's it's weird. I'm weird about walk ups. I love the walk up music. It's one of my favorite parts of like going to bomb every day mm-hmm. and the ones and I love the ones like Dylan Cruz. I don't you remember last year. Dylan Cruz had one where like the fans were like clapping See, along to it. Yeah, that we, stuff's cool. We've talked about that. I I, th- I talked about that with Coach Hobbs actually. He's like we were talking going through everybody's music. He was talking about how like always the best ones are when you get the crowd into it. Like Sonny Deshera. When yeah. he was there, I forgot what the name of the song is, but that it's like Italian an Italian song, song and the whole so crowd good. is clapping at the exact same time. I think that's so cool. Same for oh, Dylan yeah. Cruz last year. I, and I like in Hoover when they play both teams' walkout music. It's just kind of kind of a cool little See, thing. I wish they would play them in the regionals and stuff. I've never really understood that. I know, and Arkansas will try to like because you're. Sneak I guess you're not in there. right. They're like well, especially with pitchers, like he gets a third out, and it's like they'll play his music there, but. uh have you ever thought about just like switching it up completely? Because I know some people like will switch theirs all the time. Have you thought about just like superstition wise of being like I got to switch it up? See, I switched it in twenty two because a lot of the guys just said it wasn't a great song. It was uh, one more time for Daft Punk. Oh, I remember that. But they were like, that. they were like, that's just not a good like song for that situation. So I changed <laughs> it to I forgot what it was, some generic rock song. I really want to do like some like Metallica. Like I want to do one. a lot of people chose Metallica. I want to do one by Metallica and get it weird. towards the end where it like picks up a lot. But like you've yeah. got to have them queued up for like if you start struggling, we're going to this song, and then if that doesn't work, we're going to this song. You got to have I'm them. Not like that. I usually <laughs> just like I'm not really superstitious. I feel like if I'm struggling, you just gotta like push through. It's it. gotta fight. The, you just gotta pitch better. Yeah. Uh, do you think that's the cause the solution is just play better? Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely not that. that. It's that simple. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I guess no diggity worked well for you freshman. I mean statistically. Statistically, your freshman year, <laughs> best years. I mean, oh, you're on pay. I mean, you might have to give back. That might have to be the one, but you'll have to get t- uh, Kendall to like write his his approval for it, I guess. I don't even think he's using it this year, though. No, yeah, I think he got some Young Thug. I remember I remember him having Young Thug. But uh, I wanted to ask you, so, okay, right off the bat, you cannot say the nine strikeout game in Omaha. Doesn't count. You can't say anything in the postseason, and you can't say your complete game. What's been like the favorite moment of your career, though, where like you look back and you're like, that was a maybe an SEC series. Let's just limit it to SEC regular season. Is there a moment of your career that kind of sticks out? Because I have one of yours that if you, if you need some help, I got one that sticks out as my favorite Willie Mack moment. I'm going to say Auburn in 22. That was my first career SEC uh, appearance. I'm really glad you said that. Is that what you had? I literally had it written down. <laughs> Auburn 2022. That's and, just like a big moment for me. It's like, you know, oh, you yeah. always like – you're always like confident and like you're like trying to say like you I'm I'm good enough for this. But that was like my first SEC appearance and I did pretty well. And I'm sitting there like, I can do this. Like yeah. 
any worry that I had was gone. I was like, if I can do the, if I can do that to Auburn, I can do that with other teams. It was a good moment. I remember that at that time because obviously by that point you had been pitching in midweeks for a while. Like you had been, I mean, you obviously pitched in 2020, 2020, yeah. And then you'd pitched a few midweeks. I don't know if you'd pitch on the weekend at that point yet, but I remember that Auburn series being kind of the moment where it was like, okay, this Will McIntyre thing is for real. Because <laughs> I, f- I mean, you know, it was the one of the most bizarre things that's ever happened. I was telling your dad this the other day, but my dad came up for the UAPB series that year. And I remember seeing you down there throwing, and you had not thrown in the se- in, at all, all season. And I was like, I wonder who's starting game two. And we were kind of talking about it. And I was like, well, Will McIntyre's throwing where like the starter would throw. But I was like, I don't know if he's just like throwing a bullpen. I was like, I really don't know. And so I was like, I, I just can't imagine that's what's happening. It turns out. So my dad likes to take credit for, uh, for all of your success. He feels like he <laughs> launched your career. And uh, he's from Central Arkansas, so I don't know. Maybe that's just, maybe you're just y'all are bonded for life. But uh, <laughs> I think it's so funny just looking back at that year. But I, the reason I had the Auburn 2022 written down is because you strutted off the mound. You showed some emotion. I've that. gotten grief for that. No, I, dude, uh, you you should old, not. That old, was literally my favorite moment of your career. My old roommate. I don't. I I tend to do it when I like strike out the side or something when I'm feeling myself. I, the little strut. He gives me so much grief. He's like, dude, you could do something a little cooler. But I'm like. I, I thought it's, it was perfect. It's an in the moment thing. Like yeah. you don't really plan that. Well, you kind of. I feel like you had a your first career appearance against South Alabama. I remember. I don't know if you strutted off the mound, but I remember when you struck out the side. It was like the whole dugout was just going crazy. Oh, dude, I was trying to keep it composed, and I get to the dugout, and they're all cheering me on and messing with me, and I just can't help but smile. Gotcha. I was, trying to, I was trying to look cool, but I hey, couldn't. It is what it, you look cool in the Auburn game. The whole <laughs> stretch you had going, it was perfect, dude. I, I'm not even joking. That seriously, when I, when I think about your career, I think that's one of the first things I think about. I'm like, I remember that was the moment where I was like, Will McIntyre is is our dude. Like he's our guy. We can count on this dude. You know, because that's how it is as a fan, as a sports fan, or someone cover the team. It's like you you got to figure out who you can trust. That was like a moment where I was like, we can officially trust this guy. He's one of us. But uh, speaking of you being one of us, what I really appreciate about you is you're a legit hog. You're not just some kid that's from the state of Arkansas or like someone who goes to school at Arkansas. Like you would be cheering for Arkansas and living and dying with these games, even if you were on the team or not. Uh, and I have it on very good authority. You were there in 2018 in Omaha yeah. watching the, uh, and this is before your time. I guess you were in high school at this point. Uh, how often do you think about being there at that 2018 almost national title winning game? That's like one of the saddest days. I mean, that team was so good, and I just think about, like, trying to get back there pretty much every day. Like, that's just the dream is to be in that situation that they're in, is to be playing for it all. And getting that taste of it in 22 and just not getting it done last season just left a salty taste. Like, that's just, like, my dream is to getting to Omaha and being able to compete for it. It's just crazy to think back of, like, how all this works like in that moment in 2018 it's like man this is the worst thing that could have ever happened and you know with your career I'm sure you've had moments where you're like man this is not going the way I thought it was going to go like it but then you look at it if y'all are able to get it done this year and I'm not trying to put that pressure on you but I just mean it would make it that much sweeter you know like if you just have success and you win a title that's cool but I feel like it's going to make it that much more special when Arkansas eventually gets over that hump Mm -hmm. you know whether it's with you or without you later on a few years later but I feel like it's all going to make it like the story is going to be crazy especially this year's team man like there's just so when i just watch you guys out there i see so many like peyton holt and you and gage wood all these in-state kids and then there's kids from california kids from south korea it's just like i'm you this team has an interesting feel to it that i just i i cannot wait to watch you guys play i've like tried to tell some of the guys i was like dude i've grown up with this like y'all do not understand that like you are everything to this state because yeah. the state has no professional teams. I mean, you got minor league teams, but like you don't have a right. big time professional team. So like people aren't living and dying with the travelers other than <laughs> your dad. <laughs> you got a problem. <laughs> people aren't like yelling at the travelers players for yeah. not playing well, but they yell at y'all for not playing. You got well. a sports addiction if you got that. But um, <laughs> like you don't have like you know an MLB team, an NFL team to like get behind. So like. The fans show that for football, basketball, baseball, every sport in this in this school. So like, it is an unreal experience to be here. Yeah, and I mean, it, it's kind of weird because you you think about it in those moments when you lose a midweek game and there's people on Twitter freaking out and crying about how y'all suck, and it's like kind of annoying how fans live and die with everything. But it's like you would rather that 
Yeah. There's so many college that baseball shows schools. shows you how much yeah. they're invested in you rather than like, oh, they won. I remember Tavian Josenberger. We interviewed him after a fall scrimmage last year, and he was like baffled at what was going on. He oh, won like the fall classic, or whatever. it was. Yeah, I think it might have been that. Yeah. It was one of his first game, first times like playing in a fall scrimmage at Arkansas. Because mm-hmm. I mean, when he was at Kansas, there probably was less people at his weekend series games at Kansas than there were for fall random scrimmages at like 3 p.m. on a Thursday. There will probably be 450 people, 400, 500. The scrimmage like a week ago or something. There was yeah. Oh my god, there was I couldn't like 100 believe. Hundred people in the hog pen. I'm like, dude, that's like. Unreal. <laughs> the frat bros. Yeah, yeah you hear that like, one? They, they got out they're there. They're out there for a scrimmage having a grand old time, yeah. and like you probably don't see that at a bunch of other schools, so we're super fortunate to have people like that behind next us. Time, uh, next time you give up a home run and you get on Twitter and see people trashing you, just just smile and know that you would rather this than, than nobody care. As yeah. weird as it sounds, and obviously I'm not defending anyone who trashes it. If you're tweeting at Will McIntyre after he gives up a home run, you're an idiot. You're a weirdo, but it doesn't bother me. It's like whatsoever. in a weird way, it's like they at least care, you no, know. Yeah. Whereas there's, you know, some places where it's it's not the case. But how frustrating is that though? The fans that do, that live and die with every moment, and then you lose a series to Georgia, and it's like the end of the world. How fr- like is it, I'm, I'm sure you guys see that. Is it y'all just ever just sit back and laugh at these fans that are like freaking out because UALR beat y'all on a Tuesday night? I mean, first off, we're mad. We're as mad as y'all right. are. So like, I don't. I wonder if. Fan- I've always wondered if people take that into account, but like to me, it doesn't bother me because it just it shows how much our fans care about us. But like, I know some of the guys that like they'll they'll get upset with some things that are said with them. I'm like, dude, just like get off of it. Like, yeah. who cares? Like, it's some random person's opinion that you'll never meet. Like, you just got to know that like these fans care about us, and, and like. It's almost to a point where it's they care too much, oh, <laughs> but yeah. it's like it's awesome. Like you, if you go to another college, you probably won't experience that. Right. I mean, especially in baseball, where it's like I feel like Arkansas is just a different breed with this baseball. And there's SEC programs like LSU; they get after it, Mississippi State. State yeah. But it's really only about eight to ten schools that treat baseball like it's football, mm-hmm. like it's basketball, and all that stuff. Which I mean, for me personally, like I've always been just I've had a soft spot for Arkansas baseball. I, I was convinced I was going to play for them until I was about fourteen, and I realized that wasn't happening. Uh, I was convinced. So once I Realized I wasn't playing for him. I was like, man, but this is just this is the program I love. Like, this is what I love to talk about. And I remember growing up, it was so hard to watch games. You know, like I remember listening to Chuck Barrett on the radio so much. So when SEC Network came around, they started like, you know, now you can stream and televise every game. I've even heard the Little Rock game might get streamed this year. So we're really I've new new won- world we're I've living never in. Understood what, like why they couldn't do that. I mean, I I always hear about people complaining about yeah. those games just never being on TV. So the way it was described to me is basically like those arenas or those venues don't have the wherewithal to like stream online. So if it's not picked up by like SEC network, national TV or ESPN or whatever it is, it's like hard for them to do it or it would like cost the university Pretty money. Sure they stream minor league games, so I don't know. but I guess it costs whoever it is yeah. money. And so the university is just like, eh, we're, we're good for this Tuesday night against yeah. whoever, but it is what it is. But I, you know, I was just thinking about your career and like just all you've been through. I feel like you're the, perfect leadership guy for a team to have because like there's nothing that any of these players on this team could experience in college baseball that you haven't you know if you're a if you're a freshman pitcher who's like upset about your role like you've been there before if you're up you know you're struggling on the mound you're not having what you've been there before if you want to the success you've kind of had it all so how do you view your leadership role on this team like do you are you super vocal or are you just kind of like the older wise guy that people come to for wisdom I wouldn't say I'm like super vocal I'm just more of like a I'm going to do what is asked of me and what I expect out of myself and, like, more just, like, I guess, lead by example. I'm not really a big talker. (laughs) Like, I'll talk, but, like, I'm not the guy that's going to, like, step up and have, like, a speech in front of the team. I just I don't feel like that's ever been my personality. Well, and I I believe you when you say you're not a good self-promoter because Gabe Gack was in here the other day, and I was referencing your 2022, how you, like, had to storm into the office and – demand smack the table and we're like dvh put me on the mound i was trying to tell him that story and he's like what are you talking about i was like will has not told you the story of when he <laughs> when he picked up dave van horn and told him to put me in the mail you, you didn't tell him that story about about your big See, thing i'm just not like a big like talking about myself <laughs> guy i just i'm just there for like you know goofing not goofing off but like just having a good time yeah. it's you know my favorite thing is like just sharing stories and learn about other people's experiences and stuff yeah yeah, I mean, so, but I, I got to ask you to talk, talk about yourself a little bit because you, I want to hear your side of the, I, I, I exaggerate a little bit, but you going in there and talking to DVH because this was like mid-April of the season, right? So we're talking about 
well into the season. Like, ha- had you been planning that for a while? Was it like kind of building where you're like, I kind of got to say something or like, I feel like I'm like, at what point did you finally reach a point where you're like, all right, I got to go talk to somebody. I got to talk to Hobbs. I got to talk to DVH. Like it was actually a uh, coach Hobbs's office. That that's I what I, okay. To. I couldn't remember if it was, but you know, coming from Bryant, we're like, Bryant's also like a baseball town. Oh yeah. And we, you know, we had very like strict old school coaches and I respect them. Like they've taught me everything I know. And uh, they're the ones that got me here. Um, You're just taught, like, never to ask about playing time. From a young age in Bryant, you're really taught never to ask about playing time. So, like, going in there, that's, like, the most nervous I've ever been for anything in my life. I would imagine so, yeah. And I just have the talk, and it goes well. And he's like, we're going to give you a chance. But, like, you know, if it doesn't go well, like, you might need to go somewhere else. And I'm like, I totally understand that because I had a terrible fall that year, like, they, that's how they usually base, like, right. who, like how they're going to put pieces together. It's, like, how you do in the spring and fall. And I had a terrible spring and fall. And so, like, I knew, like, it was bad. I just wanted to get, like, the chance. So, like, that was the biggest fear I've ever had is just going in there and asking for that chance. But <laughs> It's just crazy, <laughs> it seemed to work out. you know, thinking about how it's all about timing and all this. Because you think about that 2022 season. You and Kevin Copps were the last two people to start a game that year. You were that Grand Canyon series. You you made your first career start on that Tuesday. You go, what, six innings? Give up one run, like a awesome, like, oh, it's about to launch you into this awesome thing. And Kevin Copps, they give him a start because he was struggling. And then he gave up like five runs in the first inning, gets yanked. And it's like, I remember at the time thinking, I was like, man, Kevin Copps, like, I don't even think he's going to like travel this year. Like, it just seemed like he had kind of lost, it was lost in the shuffle a little bit that year. Then obviously a global pandemic happens. And he ends up becoming Kevin Copps, and you ended up having to wait a little bit longer for your chance. But it's just kind of crazy to look back. Like, if the pandemic doesn't happen, there's a very good chance Kevin Copps just finishes out his career at Arkansas and doesn't pitch a ton down the stretch that year because he probably wouldn't have gotten that chance based on how he was pitching. And then who knows what happens with your, you know, how it would have affected your path and all that. But it's just crazy. I feel like it all, in a weird way, worked out perfectly to where. Now you have this chance. I've said this multiple times about Kevin is like, I can't express how much like somebody like that deserves everything that he had gotten. He was one of the nicest guys I've ever met and like just a great dude overall. So like everything that he did, he earned and he didn't like, he never let it go to his head. Like he's just like, just the most cool, relaxed guy. You can sit down and talk to him. Like he was back here this fall and we were trading tips over like how to throw our cutters and he taught me <laughs> that's like, the guy to talk to i, yeah, I would imagine yeah. <laughs> so we were, we were talking cutters me and him and uh you know he's in the minors now and like he played with me he could have just said what's up to me and just walked off but like we sat there and talked for a good 15 20 minutes just about how to throw one certain pitch so he's just such a great guy so. i remember one time he told me that i had a good tweet and is like the, i, I should have like framed the conversation like I, that was like that was the peak of my life but uh Seriously, though, like, how motivating was it? Like, kind of watching him do what he did, especially in a year where you're redshirting, where you're kind of in the mode. I mean, he had to redshirt in, I guess it was 2018 because he had the Tommy John. And just how 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 much has that helped you? I mean, I'm sure – I'm not saying you're Kevin Copps, but to see a guy who didn't have it all figured out and had to really work and had to put in time and figure stuff out, like, how was it – did it give you some confidence watching him go through what he went through, knowing that, you know, it might work out for you down the stretch? Yeah, for sure. You know, I'll I'll put that red shirt year all on myself. You know, I didn't really keep myself in the best shape coming back, and you know, bad shape leads to bad results. So watching him do what he did, and you know, having some talkings with Coach Hobbs, and talking about like just need me to get back into baseball shape and just overall healthy. I uh, I knew I could do it, and then. I just had a bad fall in spring, and I don't blame them for anything. I I respect what they do, and so I yeah I I took a lot of motivation from him just because he's such a great example for any baseball thing you can use. Well, and just like a work ethic standpoint too, oh, yeah. like seeing a guy who puts in that much work and so get consistent, rewarded, so consistent know? with it too. Like yeah. I don't think he took much time off from anything. He was so consistent with everything he did. Yeah. When I hate to say it, but I just remember when I was in high school, I remember some of the hardest workers in the weight room were not the best players on the team, which, again, Alexandria's senior high baseball is not Arkansas. But it's like – so I remember seeing that and being like, wow, these guys working so hard. But it must be cool to see someone who works that hard and is probably the hardest worker on the team 
get the results. Yeah, you know, it's like see the that old saying, uh, what is it like? Hard work beats talent over oh, yeah. talent that doesn't work hard or something like that. Yeah, I well, fully you know, believe in that. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, we've seen it. We've seen it play out. Play. I mean, Arkansas. I feel like is the for a program that has so much elite talent year in year out. It's kind of crazy how many guys have been great players at Arkansas that are not super like uber toolsy guys. Like whether it's Carson Shaddy or someone like that, or even pitchers like I would even say throw yourself or. Kevin, I mean, Kevin had some some talent. It's not like he was a, not a talented kid or that you're not talented, but there's feel like like Charlie Boyce. Like Arkansas has so many of those figures who are just unlikely heroes, it seems like. And that's what that's what has made your career so fun to watch is I feel like you're the ultimate evolution of that. Of just like your story is so unlikely, just from the whole thing. Just coming from Brian and being like a guy that we didn't really know about when you were coming in to having huge moments as a freshman. Like the whole story is just it, it has really been one of the more fun ones to watch. And you know, when we talk to Hobbs, I always get the sense when he talks about you that he really respects just you as a person. Like, obviously, he likes you as a pitcher, but I can tell that he has a real appreciation for just your journey and what you've been through. Do you get that feel from the coaches? Do you feel like they've, you feel that you really like won them over and they they respect you a little bit more now? Oh, yeah, for sure. Not that they didn't respect you. Our but relationship meant- has, you know, grown from my freshman year to where it is now. And it's, I, I used to be deathly afraid to talk to him just because, like, that's how yeah. I was told as growing up. Like, don't bother your coaches or whatever now where I can, you know, have fun with them and mess with them occasionally. And I think he kind of missed that because he, he complained to Cody Frank last year. He's like, dude, there's no old guys on the team that mess with me this <laughs> yeah. year. So I was like, me and Cody kind of made it a point that we're just going to mess with them and ask them some funny questions or something. Yeah. It must be a little weird now for college coaches now where it's like, you don't really get to grow with your yeah. t- It's like all transfers, all freshmen, yeah. all whatever. But uh, I actually talked about that with like, some of the freshmen a while back, I was like, I'm the only one left on the team that was in the old locker room, the old facilities. Yeah. So <laughs> I feel <laughs> it feels weird. That's why I wonder, like, if the team all views you that way. If they're like, oh, this is like the OG. This is like the guy. <laughs> this is know, like the, the wise that. owl that we go talk to. I don't know I if they, they all – I'm sure the younger guys, they respect you like that. But, uh, yeah, I was just kind of thinking, is there any freshmen or younger guys on the team that you kind of taken under your wing? Or, like, are you just more the – lead by example type or are there any young guys that you kind of tried to mentor in that way I mean I'm I'd say I'm more lead by example but you know I'll occasionally like when we're in the bullpen for um a scrimmage and there's like some freshmen in there I'll talk to them about like hey what do you do to warm up you know here's what I do this works for me you just find like certain things you do that works for you coming into a game because most freshmen in high school they're starters they've never came out of the bullpen so like they gotta find a way to get into that routine of like coming out of the pen and not being the one who started the game so yeah uh you got some new catchers on this team hudson white pretty good one could argue Ryder helfrick pretty good good, uh just in the off season what's it been like throwing to those dudes and i feel like you've had different catchers like every year you've been at arkansas so is it What's it been like just getting that rapport with those guys, feeling more comfortable with them calling pitches and stuff like that? Yeah, it's mostly just been like getting on the same page. Is like, <laughs> I remember like the first scrimmage I threw, I think I threw to Huddy White. And um, I was sitting there, I was like, hey man, this is what I do. I'm not a big fastball guy, I just throw <laughs> a lot of cutters and occasional fastball. And I remember like the first inning, he. I had to shake a lot. I'm like, I'm trying to get there to that cutter. Yeah. I'm like, and we finally, it's just more of like chemistry, yeah. getting on the same page. and. Now he can kind of read me what I want to throw in certain situations. So. You don't have to give me the full spiel, but I need you to talk to me about your pitch sequence or just your uh, rep, 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 your repertoire. Is that the word I'm looking for? Repertoire. repertoire? My arsenal. I couldn't spell arsenal. that word that's if you an, put a an, gun to my head. I could arsenal, not spell. it's an easy word. Arsenal, for yeah. There your you bag go. of tricks. Because uh, I've been watching you pitch for five years now. I still don't have a firm understanding of what it is you throw. I feel like it's like, especially when I'm sitting next to track, man, it makes it more confusing, actually, because I'm like, oh, there's 88. All right, all right. 86, 89, 83, 85. It's like just, it feels like it's a randomizer. Talk to me about the arsenal. So I throw a four seam fastball that I don't know what my average velo is. I heard it touch 94 this offseason. It varies from day to day. But I heard, I heard that. (laughs) But my fastball has a lot of carry on it, which means it'll play up in the zone better because it just defies gravity more. And then I have a changeup that I've kind of developed that I'm starting to really love using. What's the what? What range is that changeup? 
Like, what's the difference between? Is it like kind of? It's weird. I got my track mirror report back the other day, and apparently threw one at like 86, 87, and I've never done that. You're on some Zach Grinky shit, dude. That's that's how <laughs> Zach Grinky, dude. He literally, I was, you know, he was only with the Astros for a couple of years, but he was towards the yeah, end of his he career. Threw some he threw a change up harder. It was his crazy. fastball yeah. and his slide is like fastball eighty nine, slider eighty seven, change up ninety. Yeah, it just doesn't make any sense. And then I got my curveball, which is. Yeah. It's more of just like a show me, but like I can still get you out with a pitch. It's not gonna be my, it's not gonna be my premier offering. And then I got my cutter, which is my go-to. Oh, yeah. That's that's my money making pitch. Yeah, uh, that's where I get all my outs from. I feel like, but I've, when the cutter, that's the one that throws me off when I'm trying to like think of what you're it's doing. It's not really a true like full-on cutter. It's for some reason that's what I've always called it cuz in high school I didn't have access to all the metrics yeah. and stuff, so I just called it a cutter cuz it's not your traditional slider yeah. grip, but it's more just a really firm slider. Well, I remember when Campbell, so obviously Kevin Copps has the most famous Razorback cutter, but I remember Isaiah Campbell, he used to use the term cutter when he would talk about his pitches or just what I was at. He's like, "Oh yeah, I threw a cutter to that guy." And then I was like, I don't think he throws a cutter. Like, I was trying to think of it. And Matt Hobbs even said, he's like, look, he calls it a cutter and we let him do it. It's just a slider. That's, it's a straight up slider. I, that's pretty much me. I and he, like. but, but it's just, he's like, hey, whatever he throws and whatever you're thinking about, you know, because that's how it is with pitching. It's like, whatever you're thinking about when you're throwing, like, whatever gets you to the best situation, mm-hmm. that's, it is what it is. But uh, yeah, the cutter also throws me off whenever you're pitching. Because I, I try to think about sequencing. Like, when I'm watching Hagen pitch, I'm like, oh, he's, he's throwing, you know, fastballs up and away to this guy. Like, oh, you made, you know, and then I'm trying to figure out, like, what you're thinking. You're the hardest dude to play that game with because I'm just like, what was that pitch? Oh, wait, what? No, I've been told that many times by guys. So, like, when we're playing scrimmages in the fall and spring, they have us, like, track, uh, like, batters and ABs. Gotcha. Like, so, you got to write down one for Oh, you're the, you have that. to be the worst and for that. And they all, like, don't like – they either don't like <laughs> doing me or they like doing me because there will be days where I only throw cutters, so they just have to write one thing down. <laughs> and then there's days where they're like, we have no idea what you threw today, so – I've been hey. told that. Yeah, I mean, you, and that's that's pretty much how – that's always a good sign, though. Because, like, that's how it was with Kevin Copps. Nobody really knew what he was throwing. And then every now and then he'd, like, flash a 93, and we're like, oh, yeah, I forgot he, he does do that. That's that's pretty good. But uh, what hitters have given you – on this current team, I should say, what hitters on this team have given you the most trouble, whether it's just – maybe not even you personally, but just that you feel like are the toughest outs on the team? For me, it's Diggs. Uh, I've yeah. faced Diggs. Pretty good. 20, 30 times since he's been here. And I know me and Diggs talk about a lot. It's going to be an eight to nine pitch at bat every time because I'm going to get him one, two, oh, two, and he's going to find a way to work it even or three, two, and then he's going to start fouling a bunch of stuff off. So he's definitely my least favorite at bat. <laughs> Dude, people, there, there was, I guess it was a couple years ago. Anytime I would ask someone that, all the pitchers would say Zach Gregory. Which is funny because it's like yeah, you're, you're thinking of a too. team that's got like Caden Wallace and Michael Turner. Because he's a very like, picky guy. So like if you're going to yeah. face him, you got to make sure you get strike one and strike two right, really quickly. It took it took the SEC a long time to realize that he doesn't swing a ton. Yeah. Once they figured it out, he's a little bit easier to pitch to. But it's like there was a while where he was drawing just crazy walks. Yeah. And that's just kind of how it is. But I feel like I don't know what Nate Thompson, how he goes about teaching this. But all of the hitters that that are under him, they seem to have just such a good understanding of the strike zone. And they developed that so quick, and I feel like that's just simply not swinging at balls. That 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 makes you just tough to deal with alone. So I feel like Arkansas's got obviously they've got dudes like your Vahiva who's going to have a ton of power, but even like you go down the order and the guys like Wagner and whoever Jason Jones and all these dudes, they're super selective, and so it's like it's just going to be a nightmare for some of these opposing teams. Uh, luckily, these pitchers I'm about to ask you about don't have to face Arkansas. Hagen Smith, Brady Tiger, and Mason Molina. Is that the best rotation you've ever been around? Like, just when you've been here, like, just – is that the one? By far, like, in the past, we've had, you know, one to two guys. <laughs> I guess you've been in the rotation, so I'm probably not like – maybe you're partial. You're like, oh, last year's rotation, that was the one. <laughs> well, I just remember, like, like teams I've been a part of the most, like, 22, like, Connor was our guy. And then you had Hagen and you had Wiggins, who they both, like – to their own credit, they pitch well, but towards the end of the season, it just kind of like felt right. like they had a little bit of fall off. But like these three guys are like talent wise, I think are by far the m- most talented trio of pitchers I've been with as starters here. Well, and it's like a perfect storm because I mean, you think back at some of these Arkansas teams like 2018, Blaine Knight obviously was Blaine Knight and Casey Murphy was super reliable, but like Campbell that year was not the Isaiah Campbell that we yeah, came to yeah. know and love. And so it's like, 
there's that's very talented, but it's like it didn't line up perfectly to where all three of those guys, like if you got junior year Campbell in that, that's great. And then yeah, Campbell's yeah. year, you had like Nolan and Wicklander were freshmen. Like you, usually it takes them a year or two to like get to where they were yeah. going to be. Because they're most, I feel like most Sunday guys here are usually around a freshman or something. Because right. was Hagen a Sunday guy? His I think he started on so- Saturdays. Saturday, Wiggins Saturday. started the, the yeah, years as on a Sunday. Sophomore, yeah. But they yeah. were. It was like something weird that year where they had the same starting rotation every week until the last week of the season, which never happens in college mm-hmm. baseball. Like you, you, even this year, it's like I'm sure it'll happen, but it's like it's just so weird. That's just rare to have three teams that they know who they're starting every week. Mm-hmm. Freaking last year is TBA, TBA. It was like three TBAs every week. Um, but yeah, I just feel like it's the perfect. Like it's rare that you have three guys who are three juniors in their, you know, I don't know, not their primes, but their best years, and so. I, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be very interesting. I've been trying not to hype you guys up too much and be like, guys, they're winning it all. But like, I feel confident saying this is the most talented starting rotation they've ever had, at least from that perspective. Um, but is there anybody on this team with a pitcher hitter that you feel like is going under the radar a little bit? Where you're like, I'm surprised more people, or maybe not surprised they're not talking about them, but you're like, I think people will realize. Is there anybody that sticks out? You know, I don't really keep up with it that much, but y'all talk about Hunter Dietz a lot. We don't talk because he's hurt right now. And when guys are hurt, something about it in my brain, I'm just like, I can't evaluate them until yeah, they're not okay, hurt. I get that. But from what I've seen, you're in for some good stuff when he's back. Well, we know he's going to have good stuff. That's yeah. one thing. Like, I've seen him pitch a few times now. I know it's going to be, gonna be fun to watch when he gets back. Goodness. Well, uh, you know, I was thinking about just the roles of this team and how it's all going to shake out. And I feel like you and a few of the other older guys are going to be the guys that they depend on more. Then they probably then people realize just because these freshmen that have all this great stuff, you've seen a lot of freshmen in your careers that have good moments, but it's like tough to rely on a freshman for full season. So do you feel like are you prepared to be that kind of guy where it's like I'll be the older guy that we can count on while these other guys figure out what their role is a little bit? Yeah, is that the way I'm, you view it? I just my thing is I just want to play. So I like, want to pitch. You huh? put, tell me when and where I'll be there, and I'm ready to play. So like I have the mindset where I'm okay with trying to pitch one inning every game if that needs to be needed from me. I don't really care. I just want to have the ball in my hand. You're going you're gonna to have to wear your spikes to the the, the, the dugout every day, huh? You just, there's not going to be a day you can just <laughs> relax, huh? It's just how it's going to be. That was actually one of the nice things about being a starter is like on a yeah. Friday I'd wear just a BP top and no shirt under it and get a nice little breeze under there. It was nice. Yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> um, I heard you and John talking about like SEC parks so you're looking forward to. Y'all's road schedule this year. It's not great. I got to be honest. But uh, I guess you'll, I mean, you've been to South Carolina before. Did you go there? No, you didn't go that year. Didn't make that trip. Yeah. So I guess you'll get to go to South Carolina. That one will be cool. That'll That's be a fun. cool one. They have like a historical park. Over right. There. Uh, at least you don't have to go to Columbia, Missouri. That's that's you every year. That's the every time I ask them, I'm like, what's the worst place? Like, that's the worst by far. But uh, like, I, you know, I guess you and John talked about it a little bit. But throughout your career, is there a park that sticks out where you're like, that's my favorite park in the SEC? Yeah, def- definitely Duty Noble. Like, mm. I've said it over there as well. It's like people always compare Bomb and Duty Noble as one and two, and they're going back and forth debating it. And just like the environment, their fans are just like ours. They're all pretty much diehard fans. Mm. And the way, like, they cook out in the outfield oh, yeah. similar to kind of like Bomb. And the fact that, like, their student sections right where our bullpen is is pretty awesome. It's kind of oh, like yeah. – the bullpen and left field and the hog pen, it's where our fans are a lot. So Well, and it's kind of crazy because last year when y'all played Mississippi State, this was not your you know, classic Mississippi yeah, State yeah, team. Yeah. So it's like imagine what it's going to be like when they're, they've they got a good team Did in there. Did you see when they played like Ole Miss there? Was it last year that they had a crazy <laughs> one? They packed it out and some. Like I think it was like an NCAA record for a collegiate game. That's right because they had just done that. I remember when we were there, mm-hmm. they were talking about that. They were like, oh, best whatever but yeah it's pretty crazy you think about if mississippi state's able to get back to being the team that they typically are like that place is going to be thank Mm -hmm. god y'all don't have to go there this year although the team that won the national title that mississippi state team arkansas made quick work of those dudes in starkville (laughs) so this is what it is but uh i guess let's see where are we at here i guess before babe before i let you get out of here i do we want to talk you you gave the whole spiel with john but anyone that doesn't is listening now that is listening to this that did not listen to the john neighbor show y'all be sure to check that out Great interview with Will where he talked about not as important stuff that we're talking about here, but uh, tell tell everybody about the the charity and what you've got going on this year with the strikeouts. Yeah, so I um, made a post today, and it's for Cartai of Arkansas, which is a cancer treatment 
center and they're the ones that treated my dad when he had cancer when I was a senior in high school so that's been about five years ago and he's he's been the clear but um I'm doing five dollars for every strikeout this year I will donate to Car Tie of Arkansas and I put out a link in my bio and you can just go to my Instagram or Twitter bio which is just w underscore McIntyre and if you want you can pledge to match whatever amount you want to do I put multiple different amounts or you can do a custom amount and it's all just going to go to like patient care patient assistance patient transportation so yeah I just feel like it's a it's a great thing for for me and my family it's kind of close to us they did a great job taking care of my dad and I feel like it's also something everybody can get behind because everybody has somebody they know or has been affected by cancer. So. Yeah, well, that's awesome. But, yeah, like you said, just go check out his social media if you want to match. Here at Natty, Natty State Sports, my boss Branson has pledged to donate. Sweet, thank you. You know, I don't know if he needs me to help with those funds. I'll do it if I need to. But uh, anybody else want to go check that out? I always think – I've got to be honest. This is I don't, I'm not trying to make light of the situation. But I thought about it when Cam Little first did it. He hit like five field goals in the next game. So I was thinking, I was like, if you have like 15 strikeouts on Friday, you might have to Michael Scott, like the Scott's tots. I don't know if you've watched The Office. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you might, you're going to end up with like 500 strikeouts this year, man. You're going to be like, man, that's a lot, a lot of money. But I would be, I would be, I'd be yeah. still good for it. Well, and I feel like if you, if you end up with like 150 I strikeouts, I wouldn't pull a Michael Scott. No. <laughs> well, and if you, if your strikeouts go up enough, I feel like, you know, you probably won't have to worry about the money to pay for it if you're, if you're striking out that many guys, you know, who knows? But, uh, Will, man, I really appreciate you taking some time to join us. After doing an hour with John Neighbors, we're, we're over here media training you. We're preparing you for, uh, for you know, when you come work for us here at Natty State Sports. Uh, but, man, like, we can't wait to watch. Like, everyone, I speak for everyone, all of Hog Nation, they all co-sign this. They're ready to watch you guys play. We're yeah. so excited for just, I mean, you individually and just the team. Like, I'm ready it's the best it. time of year, man. That's one of my favorite things about being in Arkansas is when we shag BP and y'all are out there talking to us in the hog pen. So I'm ready to see some, <laughs> of, my, some of my fellow people out there. There you go. And they always say nice stuff, and they are usually very hydrated out there in the hog pen. <laughs> it's always always a great time. Will, man, I appreciate you joining us. Thanks for having uh, me. We're, we're going to put in, the, we're going to find out this weekend if you and Gabe pitch well, if like there's a bombastic bump. So if you pitch well this weekend, be sure to let everybody know. I got you. Go do the bombastic podcast. That's the way to do it, man. But for real, man, we appreciate you doing it. And uh, best of luck with everything this year, man. Thank you. It's been another episode of the bombastic podcast. You guys enjoy that.